And welcome back to the show. Building up your credit score is one of the most important things that you can do to start down the path to financial success. However, many people do not know where to start and what they should do. Our next guest comes to us and he has firsthand knowledge of the inner workings of many financial institutions dealing with credit. Joining us to tell us more details, we got the founder and author of the School of Credit, Flame Newton. And Flame, good to have you, brother. Hey, 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 what's happening? How y'all doing out there now? How I'm you doing, doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm going to do even better once you help us out here. So uh, when we talk about this here, talk to me for this. Uh, many people don't even understand the magnitude of credit. A lot of people think that you have to have the money. But there's a difference between credit and money, and credit really matters. Oh, it, it sure does. It, it, on, on, a, on a plethora of different levels. Uh, one of the things is that I want to like, I, I like to make sure that it's, it's clarified from the beginning. Uh, and, and is that there's this thing called cash is king, right? And I'm right. not here to dispel that or go against any of that. Uh, cash is king. Cash is king. There's nothing, there's no doubt about cash is king. But if you watch, if, you, if you've ever played chess before, guess who protects the cash, right? Guess who protects it? It's that queen, baby. That queen is the protector of all cash money. And so that's in that queen here, and that is our credit. So the credit protects is the cash. And that's what we get into a little bit of like. Yeah, so talk to me about credit as a whole. You know, a lot of people go in and they only find out about the importance of credit after they've unwrecked it and they need some help. But it's, it's easy in some cases to really break your credit down to a place where you lose credit, harder to get your score back up, but you do a good job of helping people really understand the nuances of the whole credit game. Man, uh, one of the things is that um, I always like to be the share this, how this, how this whole thing works, right? Um, and, and it's a system. So that system is everything. Right? Uh, how is this system being played? I'm going to show you in four easy steps about what it takes and, and, and how do you guys understand it. Number one, the number one component, I want you to write this down. If you guys are listening from wherever you are, right? I want you to write this stuff down. I want you to tune this. I want you to play this back over and over and over, right? I'm going to get into the four and I'm going to get behind it. Now, the first thing that you got to understand is that is you. You are, are the first piece of this puzzle. And so the way that I want you to understand this in its entirety is I want you to take a chair. And if you have a chair, a chair has four legs on it, right? In order for that chair, for you to sit in that chair, all four legs must be equally yoked on that chair to sit down. So the first one is you, right? What is you? Everything that supplies you. The second thing is the lender in which you plan to borrow from. The third component is the credit bureaus, which the lenders send information from. And the fourth is actually the credit scores, right? Which the credit bureaus will send over to the scores to get a numerical number, which goes from anywhere between 300 to 850 and doing the FICO system. And so once you understand that completion of that, uh, of, of how it works, then you will understand that is the entire system which, which can bring you out. So I'm, I'm, I can't wait to tackle that in too. Yeah, so get to me about fixing my credit. There's so many people who say, listen, you know what, if I could just get that, you know, that 800, if I could just get that 775, that 750, I'd really be okay. Talk to me about the tips about building your credit back up. Oh, man, love it. And, and this is where I want to stand at. First off, if you're in here now, you're talking about a credit score you lost. So I'm going to let that be first and foremost. To anyone mm. in here that's thinking about a credit score, you've already lost the battle. It is not about the credit score at all, right? What it's about in this entire entirety, right? What is it about in this entirety, right? For you to look at this, I want you to always think of a person that loses weight, right? If you're trying to lose weight, most people never lose weight when you're losing weight. What occurs is if you focus on these two strategies, which is eating healthy and working out during the course of that process, guess what? You eventually lose weight. So the same thing works over here in the credit realm, right? Understanding that method, which goes into losing weight, which is losing things off your credit profile, right? Let's first understand what is negative items on your credit profile. Let's let's get that understood first. You got to know that first. What are they, right? You start talking about late payments. You start talking about late payments, charge-offs, collections, repossessions, foreclosures, bankruptcies. You start talking about low and high utilization. And also you start talking about personal information. Listen to what I said, personal information. 
late payments is the number one killer for your credit profile. Let's let that, let's not let that sweep under the rug. It is late payments. Late payments means, listen, it is more important to pay a bill on time than it is to eat on time. I want to say that again. It is more important to pay a bill on time than it is to, to eat on right. time. Because <laughs> by you paying that bill late, that can be the difference between what you eat. Are you with me now? And so I'm those are the things. First, identifying what it is. Once you identify what they are, then you can come from behind that. Well, when you talk about late payments, that's really, you know, that's really huge. But talk to me about personal information, because sometimes people get confused about personal information. How big is personal information on your credit report? Oh, my God. It, I can't stress this enough. It is through the roof. This is one of the most smaller things that people do not pay attention to. Listen, I understand and I respect it. Bobby, you my boy, and I respect it, Bobby. Now, who is Bobby? Bobby is because his real name is Robert, but he goes out into the world and he calls himself Bobby. So when he fills out an application, he writes the word Bobby down there. So now when you look at a credit profile, he will have the word called Robert Smith down there, right? He will also have the name called Bobby Smith down there. He will also go by sometimes Rob, Rob Smith down there. Sometimes he go by Robbie Smith. Sometimes he go by Robert J. Smith. Sometimes he go by Robert. Jeffrey Smith. Sometimes he go by Bob Jeff Smith. See, those different correlations of her name, they're going to make it to where a lender looks at your credit profile and see different configurations. And what they want to do is step away because to them, you're trying to pose yourself as someone different every time. So, but when you also look on there, such as your address. Now, me and you can have a real heart to heart conversation here. If you look at a person and they have to get eight to 10 different addresses on their credit profile and they're 35 years old, what it tells them is that person that is borrowing this money is not stable, right? They're not stable. And so when you start to look at these things that go along, and that's just to name a few. Listen, I'm excited. I want you guys to know those personal identification things that come on your credit profile, they are huge to a lender. And when a lender looks at those things, they will might just say, hey, you know what? I'm out. I'd rather not deal with them, right? And so you want to make sure that you got one name, one address, one employer. Stay there for, for a second with employer. This week, you're doing brick mason. Last week, you was doing sales. Three weeks ago, you were doing a DJ. You're all over the place. Nobody knows what you're doing. So that's why it's essential to have your personal information correct on there. You know, you take a lot of time teaching this stuff, and I want to let you know that he's the author of the school of credit, uh, helping people to be able to come in that area, improving, getting your life together. Talk to us about the school of credit. Oh, man, listen, uh, the school of credit is, is, is it's a different book for sure. It's, it's, it's a total different book, which landed to me to become America's number one credit educator as told by FICO, right? And what does this book entail is, uh, I, was, I, was, I, I was talking with folks a lot. And one of the things they kept saying is, man, wish they would have taught me credit in school. So that landed us to say, you know what? Let's call it the school of credit, right? Mm -hmm. The school of credit, where each grade level represents something different pertaining to credit. So we start talking about, first off, we start talking about first grade. What is credit? Where did it begin? Do you understand about the barter system? That's how it began, right? Understand how's the social security number even linked to credit and where did it all begin, right? Start second grade, we start talking about the credit, uh, the credit bureaus, right? Uh, what, what did they do and, and how did they perform? Did you also know that there are so many different credit reporting agencies, they only talk to you about three, which is Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. There's credit reporting agencies for when you're actually trying to get an apartment. There's credit reporting agencies when you're actually going to a, uh, going to a restaurant, right? They got so many different ones that are out there, right? Then you start to get into the things that are on your credit profile. Not only that, it'll lead you over to uh, bankruptcies and what they are. And, and you'll go about understanding about the credit scoring system. Uh, seventh grade, we start talking about, uh, we start talking about disputing the credit. Now think about that for a minute. You guys were always talking about fixing your credit. I didn't start talking about fixing your credit until the seventh grade. That means there are six of the prior grades that you got to learn about before you can even begin to fix your credit, right? Mm -hmm. Eighth grade is when we start talking about building up your credit, what type of trade lines you need to have on your credit profile. How does your profile supposed to look? You remember we talked about earlier about how you eat, 
having the right foods on your table will actually give you strength or it can actually lower you down. That's similar to how your credit profile works. Having the right credit cards, having the right lenders on your credit profile can build you up or lower you down. Right. Then you start to understand about how to protect your how to protect your credit, how to get into all of these things. What about the banking system? What about happens if you have to sue someone? What about if somebody's trying to sue you? How do you protect yourself? And a whole lot more. That's why it's 12 levels of the American credit system. Yeah. So how do people get in touch with you in terms of being able to get this information? Oh, man, I love it. Listen, I need you guys to write this down. I need you to uh, write this down as, in its entirety. It's called Meet Flame. I want you to meet me, right? Meet me, meetflame.com, right? And that's where you'll find so much and so much more, right? If you're listening to me now, I always tell people, I need you to follow me on my uh, uh, on my Facebook page because uh, I carry a lot of information over there. I'm in so many groups over there. Uh, I'm, I'm across the globe. You might catch me in a city near you. That's why it's essential for you to get up with me. Uh, I just came off of a big road trip coming from Orlando to North Carolina, to Virginia, to uh, Nashville, Tennessee, back to, to, to Atlanta, Georgia, down to T Texas, and just now getting home off a six week trip. So, so I, I could be anywhere in this globe, right? Long as I'm long as this globe, I could be in a city near you. Make sure that you contact me again. That is meetflame.com. Meetflame.com. Let's try it. Meet me. Yeah. Meet Flame. <laughs> well, listen. I'm meeting you right now. I'm talking to you right now. And I need to meet you on this particular area. Talk to me about this thing before we get out of here. I got to talk about bank cards. I want to talk about store credit cards. And I want to talk about those major credit cards. Because a lot of people, particularly in our community, we like those store cards, the Walmart card, the this, that, the third, but, but uh, the Macy's card. But the reality is, is those cards are OK, but they're not really OK. Am yeah, I right? That's correct. That's correct. First off, I'm gonna share with you guys, right? So you so you actually know. There are actually, when it comes to, there's two things that are on your credit report I never want you to forget. Two categories. Either it's gonna fall in an installment category or a revolving category. When you start dealing with credit cards, right? Credit card is one piece of the actual of that actual category, right? Of revolving credit card, right? There are six different types of revolving lines on that type. One is the credit card, as you know it, which is the Visa MasterCard logo, which you actually see on the right-hand side. The second one, which is you, which you talked about, which is the retail card or the store card, does not have a Visa MasterCard logo on it. The third card is a called a service merchant card. Service merchant card actually is a co-branded card that can actually have a store name and a Visa MasterCard logo on the side. The fourth card is where you start having a charge card. That charge card is whatever you spend that month is what you have to pay back at the end of that month. That fifth card is when we start talking about a medical card, right? Meaning that you can use it for medical emergency procedures and providers and things of that nature of uh, pharmaceuticals, right? And then the sixth one is called a line of credit. Now, when it comes to these things, right, out of all of these, right, it is actually the credit card, right? It is actually, it's all, it's directly the credit card and the charge card that can give you the most bang for your buck. Why is that? Anytime that you're using your credit card, you want to make sure that you're actually receiving benefits from it, whether it's from your gas, your dining, whether you're actually... <clears throat> whether you actually are going to the grocery store, all of these different perks pertaining to where you're using your money at, you can be getting rewarded for it. And those rewards become points and they become free vacations for you. But when you're using those retail cards, the most benefit that you're going to get from those is probably getting 5% off today by using it if you went to a local store under that manner, right? So when you got to understand about how all of these cards work and what can be stacked up against them, it is actually the credit card because that's going to give you the most benefits and the most protection pertaining to you. Have you ever bought something and didn't have to return it think about going to Lowe's and you went to buy a stove or oven because yours went out when you went to go buy that stove or oven the moment that you brought that, that oven home you're under the confinements of what of Lowe's actually return policy Lowe's return policy may actually be 90 days out which means that you have 90 days to return that product or something if something was to happen by you using the right credit card by going to Lowe's that may add an additional six months to it which now gives you nine months on the protective services on that when something goes out six months later you can then return it and get your brand new one again so listen it's so much and so much more that we can cover when it comes to this stuff yeah well I gotta bring it back man because I'm out of time on this segment but that's why I want at least the audience to have an opportunity to be introduced to you Flame Newton to be able to help us, the author of the School of Credit. Again, Flame, thanks for being with us, my brother. I appreciate you, and we got to bring you back. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thanks for having me, man, and I appreciate all the work that you guys are doing.
Hey, man, thank you. I appreciate you. Well, listen, if you want more information, don't forget, visit Flame on his website at flamenewton.com and then follow him all Flame Newton. Listen, uh, don't go anywhere. We're coming right back in a minute. Stay with us.